let's do the characterization of the supremum of any set a now what is characterization means so let us characterize supremum now a number a number u is the supremum supremum of a bounded above set a a bounded above set a if and only if if and only if the two conditions are satisfied if and only if u is greater than or equal to a for any a belonging to the set a number two for all epsilon greater than zero there exists an a belonging to the set a such that such that u minus epsilon is less than a which is less than or equal to u okay which is less than or equal to u so what does this characterization is actually talking about it's talking about say on a real line say if we are on a real line like this then this characterization is talking about a set a okay a set a there should exist an a in this set a such that u is if u is the soup then u has to be greater than or equal to a and u minus epsilon a small distance epsilon u minus epsilon say here it should be less than a that is that is you cannot have any other upper bound for this a you cannot have any other upper bound this is the least upper bound and if you try to look at any upper bound lower than this you will not find it so u minus epsilon should should not be an upper bound okay should not be an upper bound let's try to prove it so it's a theorem so let's try to prove it so it's an if and only if statement so if and only if statements has two part it has it has only if part and if part okay so we'll first try to prove the only if part which is p implies q so assume so let's try to prove so let's try to prove this way of implication so what we are given so what we will do we will assume assume the premise and try to prove the consequence okay so given to us is that u is soup a okay u is soup a and we need to prove we need to prove 1 and 2 okay now as u is soup a as u is soup a that means that it is greater than or equal to a for all a belonging to a okay for any a belonging to a so this means that one holds correct now we need to prove the second part we need to prove the second part which is saying that there should for all epsilon greater than zero there should exist an a belonging to the set such that this thing holds so let us first take an epsilon so let epsilon be greater than zero so what do we have u minus epsilon will be always less than u because epsilon is a positive value which is getting subtracted from u then this would imply this would imply u minus epsilon is not an upper bound is not an upper bound upper bound of a 
Why? Because any upper bound, any upper bound will have to be greater than or equal to u because u is least, u is the least upper bound. Okay, so that's the reason. So, therefore, therefore, it does not, it does not satisfy, satisfy u minus epsilon is greater than or equal to a. Okay, so for any a, for all a, so that means which should imply that u minus epsilon instead of being this will be less than a for some a for some a so that means that there does exist an a in a such that u minus epsilon is actually less than a and we have we also have that a is less than or equal to u for all a. So, therefore, u minus epsilon is less than a is less than or equal to u. And we have proved. Okay. Now, the other way around. So, other way around, what are we given? Let us assume. 1 and 2 okay and we need to prove u is the supremum okay u is the supremum so we already have that from number 1 we have that u is greater than or equal to a right for any a for any a right this is by 1, okay, by 1 we have this. So that means u is an upper bound, what we need to prove. So want to prove least upper bound. We need to prove that it is the least upper bound. So what is sufficient for us to prove? It is sufficient for us to prove sufficient for us to prove that u is actually less than or equal to v for any other upper bound v, right? v of a of the set, right? So, let v be such such an upper bound of A. So, let V be such an upper bound of A. So, if that is the case, we would have, this implies that we would have V is less than U. Right? So, V is such an upper bound that that would mean that v is less than u or u is greater than v. Then according to according to the second part, what was given in the second part? In case you have in case you have oh let me just go up there. In case you have u is greater than or equal to a and then, then by second we have that this statement holds. By second we have that this statement holds. Okay. This, statement's, this statement holds that is that v is less than u but this is not possible because of 2. Because of 2, this is not possible. 2 is saying that if you have anything less than u, then a needs to be in between. No, a needs to be greater than that, right? So, 
what we have is that we could find we could find we could find an a belonging to a such that v is less than a such that v is less than a which is is not possible not possible because v is an upper bound v is an upper bound so if there is something which is less than u then we can find such an a such that this thing holds okay right then but if if v is less than a then that would mean that it's not an upper bound so this is not possible because v is an upper bound so therefore our assumption assumption was wrong and v v is greater than or equal to u or this implies that u is the least upper bound and that means that u equals to the supremum of this set a